Okay, um, so good morning everybody. My name is Amelia Taylor and I'm an educational psychologist and a certified TheraPlay practitioner and trainer. Um, I work for a local authority in the Northeast and I also work independently, um, mostly doing TheraPlay and TheraPlay training, often um, post-adoption. So I'm really excited to be able to talk to you this morning about TheraPlay um, because it's something that I'm really passionate about and it's the training that changed my practice more than any other training that I've done. Um, I'm going to just introduce you to um, my little girl Phoebe. Phoebe's come over here. She is my co-host this morning and she is going to school shortly but she's going to help me demonstrate a couple of activities. I really wanted to show you some video clips but I have a problem with the microphone on my laptop so hence we're going to do it live. So that might be a little bit unpredictable, but hopefully that will go smoothly. OK, so she's going to go and play with her toys just until I need her. All right. <laughs> OK, then. So this morning I'm going to talk through what is TheraPlay. Um, we're going to go through the underlying theory and the TheraPlay theory in particular. I'm going to talk through, through some activities that you can use in your practice. Um, I'm then going to talk about touch, that's just slightly in the wrong order, um, and that's an interesting one, particularly in the current climate, but I'm going to talk about some modifications. I'm going to talk through some activities that parents can do, and I'm going to um, mention group therapy and sunshine circles as well, and I'll signpost you to the to websites where you can get more information. Okay. Um, so, TheraPlay, I trained in TheraPlay in 2015, along with most of the people in my educational psychology team, and it just brought together all the things about psychology that I was learning at the time, um, that I was really, really interested in, into one intervention that I felt could really make a difference with the families that I was working with at the time. Um, because of that, I went through the certification process, lots of different therapies, as I'm sure you'll know, have um, longer certification processes um, and supervision involved, so all those sorts of things. Um, and the supervision in particular really changed my practice. So TheraPlay is an attachment-based intervention, um, and my experience of it is that I've really seen um, families change through TheraPlay. It's really intensive, um, it's a lot of work, but it's been able to create space through play um, for families, even when they've been really at crisis point. So I find it really, really powerful. Okay. So I'm just going to move my little screen out of the way here. So TheraPlay is a treatment, I prefer the word intervention, um, for enhancing attachment, self-esteem, trust in others, and joyful engagement. And most often, TheraPlay in its pure form, hang on a minute, Phoebe, Phoebe, can we have less singing, please? <laughs> Thank you. Um, and as well as working with children, we work with parents as well. TheraPlay in its original form is working with parents and children together. And as well as building self-esteem, trust in others and joyful engagement in children, it also works on building those things with the parent carers that we work with as well. It's based on natural patterns of healthy interaction. So when we look at TheraPlay activities, most of those will be pretty familiar because they're often childhood games and activities that you might have done with your parents and carers when you were little. But it's the way we do them and the how and the why we do them that makes them TheraPlay in particular, that makes them different and unique. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. So most often it's a dyadic intervention between parents and children. It's personal, it's physical, it's loads of fun. And the fact that it's so much fun is one of the reasons why I love it. So I've got my, um, I've got cotton wool balls and I've got feathers and all things next to me um, and bubbles, of course, no TheraPlay practitioner goes anywhere without bubbles. Um, that's one of the reasons why I like it so much. Oh. Sorry, I'm just having a, a moment not being able to move screens. Here we go. Okay. Um, TheraPlay has an evidence base. There's quite a lot of US evidence um, in a range of different forms, but there are UK studies as well. And in particular, um, yes, Leicester Virtual School did a study which has been published in the um, June 2017 um, Educational Psychology and Practice Journal. So I'd recommend reading that. They worked with um, children with care experience and they found promising findings for TheraPlay with their interventions. So without further ado, I'm going to show you a little activity with Phoebe. So this is a nurture activity and we often start TheraPlay with a very sort of nurturing, calming activity. And I'd be interested to see just what you notice about this. So come on, little one. Okay. Then. 
Um, so Phoebe, I can see this morning that you bought two long arms. I'm going to see, did you bring your big muscles? You did, look at that, you bought big muscles. And you bought a big smile this morning. Let's have a look. It goes from here to here, a big smile. I wonder how many fingers you bought this morning. I'm going to have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You bought all your ten fingers. Mm, they feel nice and warm. And I've got some lotion here. I'm going to put on your hands. Okay, I'm going to see, I'm going to turn this one over. I'm going to put a blob on here. Can you smell it? What do you think? Does it smell nice? It smells great, does it? Okay, so I'm just going to rub that in there. I'm going to rub it into all of your knuckles. That's these bits on your hands. You've got a little sore bit. Let's take special care of that bit. Okay. I can see some lines in your hands. Look, here and here and here. Okay, that feel nice? It feel okay, yeah? All right, you go and sit down, pop it, okay? Okay, so that's a check-in activity. Um, and what I'd hope that you might notice is that we're physically really close. Um, that there's touch, there's lots of touch in TheraPlay. Um, we're working all around the safety about that at the moment and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, I hope you noticed that Phoebe felt quite safe doing that activity, that my face is very open and I'm actively smiling. I haven't got a neutral face. Um, I hope you noticed that Phoebe felt calm and that she felt that I noticed things that were particular about her and that she felt special. And that's what we're aiming to do through those sort of nurturing activities. Okay. So why play? Well, social play can repair and heal. So when we're looking at therapy, play, we're working on that attachment process, but we're also healing children from and from and parents from what might have been potentially early traumatic experiences in their lives. So we know the shared joy of interactive play creates strong emotional bonds and it programs the brain to be fully social. So Theraplay practitioners are working really hard at being a secure base in, um, in Theraplay sessions for the parent and for the child together. We're looking at um, modelling that really uh, regulated nervous system so that their nervous systems can sync with that and can also feel calm with us. And we're looking at co-regulation that enhances the development of brain synapses over time. So we know that play brings us into the moment, into the here and now, and it stimulates the development of new neural pathways. And that bringing us into the here and now can be really important. That's what I found can build that space for families to, um, to start to change. So we know that social play is the most direct route to, he to healing children from trauma, trauma experiences. So, I find that um, TheraPlay fits really, really well with Bruce Perry's three R's model, the regulate, relate and reason, his neurosequential model. And in TheraPlay, we're very much focused on, on regulate and relate. So we're looking at neural exercises, which are rhythmic with a safe feeling adult or caregiver and patterned and predictable. So those neural exercises are all play. Um, and we know that that has to happen in, a, in the context of a safe feeling relationship for, um, for our neural networks to change. So Bruce Perry in his book, The Boy Who Was Raised as a Dog, which I love, um, talks about kind of a weightlifting analogy. So he says that um, if you lift, if you want to build muscle, if you lift 30, 30 heavy weights and you do three repetitions of 10, then you will build muscle. You build muscle in that way. It's repetitive and it's patterned and it's predictable. If over the course of a day you lifted the same weights 30 times, but in a not patterned way, um, just randomly throughout the day, you won't build muscle, it doesn't work the same way. Same weights, same amount of lifting, but without that pattern, without that predictability, and then without the rhythm, it doesn't build muscle. And it's the same with our neurology. We build neural connections when our relationships are patterned and predictable over time and when it feels safe. So there are three types of TheraPlay. Um, 
So dyadic theraplay is our work with parents, caregivers and children, typically with one adult and one child and a therapist. And um, it starts with a particular assessment called a Marshak Interaction Method or MIM, which is a theraplay assessment, assessment. And it involves nine play-based tasks and you video the adult and the child do those together. You take that away and you analyse it um, around four particular areas, four dimensions of theraplay, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Um, and from that process, you are able to set goals of the theraplay work that are unique to that parent and child, that caregiver and that child. And you, of course, would talk about those together um, and they would be jointly agreed. Um, and then you would go on a, through a sequence of theraplay um, working together, where you would start off very much modelling what you would like to, the parent to do with the child. And over time, over the sort of sequence of sessions, the parent become more and more involved towards the end where they're really sort of leading the sessions and you're more observing. Um, then we have targeted group theraplay. So this is usually small groups of, of um, children, sometimes with parents and carers, sometimes not, and a theraplay leader. And it might be that you have a group of children with sort of similar needs. They might have um, maybe needs around attention, maybe needs around social communication, um, maybe quite withdrawn children, and you would have particular goals you would be working on through that theraplay with them as well. We also have a universal theraplay contact context, also called sunshine circles, um, and this is for sort of whole classes to do theraplay work as well. So there's different levels of theraplay. Um, when we do our training, we think about it as like a little triangle with the smallest part at the top being dyadic theraplay towards universal at the bottom. Okay, I should say as well that um, typically theraplay is videoed. That's really important. Um, in particular in dyadic theraplay because um, in between the sessions with the children you have parental reflection sessions where you will look at clips of video together you might do some psychosocial education with parent and carer um, but really importantly you're going to look at clips of the video and reflect on what was happening in that situation um, I know that you've done a session um, around VIG, VIG, um, and I, some, I often blend um, VIG with my parental uh, reflection sessions as well. Other therapists blend EMDR and DDP and some just pure TheraPlay. There's different ways of doing that, but I find that VIG model really helpful um, to do that parental uh, reflection in the video work. Um, and I often find that parental work is where you really see some of the, the biggest and the quickest changes. Okay, so I've mentioned the theraplay dimensions. Um, these are them. So I'm going to start off with engagement. So engagement is about felt safety. So it's about being able to feel safe in, in the room with the parent and with the therapist. Um, inner state regulations, so that being able to feel calm inside. The social engagement system. So this is when a therapist really actively uses all of our face muscles, um, our intonation. Um, making sure that we are really, really regulated so that we are drawing that child into us, drawing that child and that parent into play with us. Uh, it's also about attachment experiences in that context of a relationship. So once we've got that felt safety, once we've got engagement, um, we also have structure. So this is the predictability of our environment. Sessions are very predictable. They follow a particular sequence over time. Um, and outer regulation as well. So sessions are very structured and it's structured by an adult. So this is often where theraplay is very different to play therapy because theraplay is a very structured dimension and it's led by an adult, led by a therapist. Um, so it is different in that way. We then have nurture. So this is about developing self-worth. Um, it's stress reduction, like you saw in the check-in activity I did with Phoebe. And it's down regulation. It's, um, it's, it's um, asking children to be calm with us and parents as well. Once we've got all of those things, we also have challenge. Um, so that's about developing a child's competence and confidence and self-efficacy, um, asking them to engage in activities that might involve a little bit of challenge. So things like um, balloon tennis, where you've got to try and keep a balloon in the, up in the air. So it's all play-based, um, low-level challenges, asking them to try new things. And through play, the TheraPlay practitioner creates a sequence of interpersonal connection between the between the child and their caregivers and we're using that model of a healthy parent-child relationship to do that. So as I mentioned sessions are sequenced so we would typically start with an entrance activity so we would all come in in the same way. Um, it might be coming in like a choo-choo train, it might be coming in stepping on small bits of newspaper for a slightly older child, something a little bit harder, it might be a wheelbarrow, all sorts of creative ways to have an entrance. 
we would then do um, a nurturing activity, that check-in that you saw or something similar to that, where we're really paying close attention to a child and seeing what we notice about them. And then we would go through a sequence of higher and lower level arousal, arousing activities. And what we're looking to do over time is to extend those activities so that we're widening a child's um, window of tolerance. And towards the end of act the activities that we do, um, a feeding session, which again is nurturing. Uh, we might have a blanket, they might snuggle in a blanket with their, uh, with their adult. Um, and then we would do an ending session where they would do an exit just like they did the entrance. And that kind of marks the starts and ends of our sessions, makes them really predictable and recognizable. So we're working on particular goals when we're doing TheraPlay and all those goals are around those four dimensions of structure, engagement, nurture and challenge. And these are what some of those might typically look like. So we want to create an environment that feels safe. So we want to create somewhere where there is the potential to feel calmness together and to lower that sort of hyper arousal that we sometimes see and um, that hyper vigilance that we sometimes see. We want to look at arousal regulation. So where a child's really withdrawn, we want to upregulate, bring them into play. And where a child is um, hyperregulated, we want to bring them down um, to be able to engage in play as well. So they're always within that window of tolerance, but that we're extending it over time. We want to engage in appropriate social interactions to develop a healthy sense of self. Um, so a child feels worthy of positive regard, feels loved and special, to create an emotional connection and shared joy through play. Um, a more positive inner working model and ultimately a more secure attachment. Okay, so I'm going to ask Phoebe to come over here again. Phoebs, I'm going to show you um, just one activity for each one of those dimensions so you can see how they might look a little bit different. So we are first going to show you um, a hand stack. So this is a structure activity. So Phoebs, can you put your hand on top of mine? We're going to build a tower and mine and yours and we're going to go up keep going well done keep going and we get to get to a point in a minute where I can't see your face but where's she gone and keep going well done and then I can't see when go back down so I can see you again can you put your hand underneath well done keep going you're doing that so carefully well done go all the way to the bottom keep going and there we go okay so it's a bit like um an older version of peekaboo when you can't see a child and then they're there again but we can do it so we really down regulate so we're going to do it with our fingers so can you put your finger on top of mine yeah we're going to do a finger stack and your next finger so we can do it really slowly oh, that's okay it's all right that's okay okay can you put your finger on top here we go keep going so we can do it really slowly and really pay attention. Okay, we're gonna stop and we're gonna do it with fists. Like one potato, two potato, keep going. Okay, so we can do it big and we can upregulate with it as well. So when we're talking about um, arousal regulation, this is what I mean, doing activities in different ways, down we go. Whoop, we've got a bit muddled, that's okay. One more and Okay, so that's hand stack and you can do it in lots of different ways. Um, I have got some bubbles this morning. So Phoebes, I'm going to blow some bubbles and I'm going to ask you to pop them. But can you pop them using your thumbs? Okay. Come a little bit closer. Well done. Oh, you even got that one that was on the chair. Okay. Can you pop them? Oh, can you pop them using your head? It's a tricky one. <laughs> you are a superstar look at that you are an expert bubble popper okay so you can pop pop, pop, pop bubbles um but what's important about that is the adult is is still structuring it so we're making sure a child stays within um what we're asking them to do so using different body parts to pop the bubbles um so it's still a, an adult structured activity and then oh cotton balls this is a nurture activity so Phoebes, I'm going to touch you somewhere on your skin, somewhere on your skin, which I can see. You can open your eyes. Okay. Touch you on your wrist. That feel okay? Okay. So if it's okay now, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. I'm going to touch you somewhere else. You can put your hand down. Just close your eyes. 
I'm going to touch you somewhere else on your skin with a cotton ball. See if you can work out where it is. Okay. It was your chin. Okay, so we're really tuning into our senses. Let's do another one. Okay, close your eyes. Okay, where was it? It was your ear. You're really good at this. Okay, let's do one more. It was your nose. That's right. Okay, so we're bringing a child into the present moment and ask them to really tune into their senses. Um, I really like doing that when you can have a, a cotton ball and a makeup brush or a cotton ball and a feather. And you can try different things so you can make it a little bit more um, trickier for children to really tune in and focus on what they can feel in their bodies. Okay. And one more, we're going to show you feather catch. Okay, so this is a challenge activity. And I think, Phoebe, this is quite tricky, isn't it? She, Phoebe already knows what to do here. She's got her hands already. So I'm going to blow my feather. See if you can catch it. And feathers are unpredictable. That's what makes this challenging. Ready? Oh, oh, can you catch it? You did it. Well done. Okay. Do you think we could do it with two feathers? Oh, you have to be really quick here. Because they might, we don't know where they'll go, do we? Ready? I'll do the blowing, you do the catching. <gasps> Look at that, you caught them. Fantastic. That's right. Right, Phoebes, you need to get ready for school now, so I'm going to ask you to say goodbye to everyone. Bye. Okay, and you go down and see Dad, and you need to take you to school, okay? Thank you for helping. You can keep those. Thank you for helping me this morning. Okay. She's a little uh, TheraPlay superstar, a trainer in the making. Okay. Um, so the importance of nurturing touch. So we know that touch can really reduce anxiety. Um, it can lower our blood pressure. It's a really great thing for regulation. Um, we do have to be careful about it. We aren't going to touch children where that's going to feel frightening for them. Um, but we know that touch promotes detachment and it's an important part of the attachment development. And it helps us to feel connected to others. I think it's something that's um, certainly missing for a lot of people at the moment. It gives a sensory input that we crave. And in particular, we know that children at schools at the moment aren't going to be um, receiving touch like they might otherwise have done or from their friends. And so it's really important that um, we help parents provide even more nurturing touch at home where that's appropriate. So I'm going to talk through some activities that parents might do at home with their children as well. Um, we are also working on a new curriculum based on TheraPlay, which is called Relationship Centred Group Play, um, which will be available for schools um, soon. So if you're interested in that, um, check out the Family Place website, thefamilyplace.co.uk, where you'll be able to find some more information, which is um, on its way. And that's um, activities, a sequence of six sessions, I think, um, based on thera therapeutic play activities, um, but done in a, in a safe way, and it comes to the training video as well. Um, so, okay, activities you can do at home with children. So these are two structure activities. So drawing around hands and feet and bodies, making a picture of your child's hand or foot by drawing around it. Can you draw around the whole body um, where it feels safe to do that? Talk about what you're doing whilst you're drawing and you can color it in together. Um, la La Magnets is another one. So you're going to sit opposite your child. You hold hands together in the middle and you sing La 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 together. And then the adult is going to say a body part. So you might say thumbs. And then you match those thumbs together with your child's thumbs like they were magnets. Okay. And we might go La 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 noses and match our noses just like they were magnets. Okay. So structure activities. Next, we have engagement activities. So I've shown you a checkup, but you can do checkups to see whether your child brought their big smile to play. Did they bring their ears? Did they bring wiggly toes or still toes? Um, you can go through lots of different body parts. Did they bring strong arm muscles? Can they show you? Did they bring their long legs, etc.? cetera? Um, I can hear my, my uh, 20 month old trying to get in the door there. <laughs> uh, foil prints. You can use tin foil to make impressions of different body parts. So you can make a robot glove, um, robot feet and legs, wrapping foil around them. Um, you can also, if you've got another adult at home, you can make prints of your child's different body parts and then see if someone else can guess where they came from. Where did they go? Can they put them back where they went from? Can they find out that the shoulder was the shoulder? And nurture. So 
I've just talked briefly about cotton ball or feather guess. So using two fit, uh, similar feeling items, so maybe a makeup brush and a cotton ball pad, um, if you don't have a cotton ball and a feather. So whilst your child's close their eyes while you touch them somewhere on visible skin, so it's predictable, can they guess which item touched them? Um, and it needs to feel safe, playful and fun. It should be a quieter and sort of down-regulating, relaxing activity. We try not to tickle when we're doing that because that can um, overexcite some children as well. A similar activity you can do along those lines is food guess, where you've got um, different types of food. And if a child can close their eyes, um, it's great with fruit, see if they can work out what food you gave them. Also really good with coloured Skittles because they have slightly different flavours. Um, but yeah, tuning into their senses. Handprints, footprints using child's paint, making handprint pictures, fingerprint pictures, loads of ideas on Pinterest for that. Um, and when you're doing those sorts of prints activities, trying to increase that nurturing touch that you're doing. So holding a hand down gently, pressing on the fingers gently, increasing that touch and keeping that um, piece of art special, maybe putting it on the fridge or something so a child knows it's valued. And challenge. So balancing activities are really great for challenge. So you can have your child lie down on their back, with their feet together in the air, and you're gonna put um, cushions on their feet and see if they can balance multiple cushions on their feet together. And then you can say, ready, steady, go, see if they can push the cushions into the air, see how far they can make them go. You can do balancing different numbers of hats on a head and see how far a child can walk before they fall off. And um, crawling race this is brilliant fun where you have a stack of cushions in the middle of a room and you're going to together um, crawl around the cushions as fast as you can and see if you can catch your child's foot before they catch your foot. OK, and you have a ready, steady, go signal again. So it's predictable and you know when it's going to start. OK, I would um, if you like the sounds of those activities, I would really highly recommend two books. So this is Parenting with Fair Play by Viv Norris and Helen Rodwell. It's a um, really accessible book with loads of activities in and gives you a good idea about the um, theory of TheraPlay as well. Um, as a practitioner, this is TheraPlay, the practitioner's guide. This is really new. It's only been out a couple of months, I think. Um, and it's again Viv Norris and Daphna Lender. Um, it's really fabulous and it takes you through all sorts of work, you know, work with complex families, complex parenting situations. Um, it's absolutely fab fab fabulous. Okay. So who can benefit from February, from February, dear me, from TheraPlay? Um, so children, their caregivers and the family as a whole impacted by a wide variety of presenting problems um, have been successfully supported using the TheraPlay model. And there's lots of studies um, out there to look at based around a whole host of different areas. Um, so often attachment insecurity, that's very often the focus of my work. Um, complex trauma, separation and loss, developmental delays, um, autism spectrum or social communication difficulties, uh, children who are withdrawn, depressed, fearful or shy. Um, and I've noticed I'm saying children, but actually you can use TheraPlay. There isn't an age limit for TheraPlay. Um, for me, I've used TheraPlay at the youngest with two year olds and at the oldest, 14 um, year olds, but it has been used up right up with adults. For children who are acting out, angry or non-compliant, impulsive, um, hyperactive, withdrawn, depressed, the list is kind of endless, I suppose is what I'm saying here, really. Okay. Um, I mentioned earlier that we have a group TheraPlay model as well and Sunshine Circles. There is a publication called Sunshine Circles, which is a book that you can get, um, which is great for schools. Um, but actually it's the application of TheraPlay in groups and Group TheraPlay is great. It's 99% interactive and only 1% talking. So it really is about bringing children into those into the moment um, through play. They are adult directed and, and they're structured. So you will have a TheraPlay leader leading the groups. They support positive mental health, self-esteem, trust, positive sense of self and self-regulation, much like dyadic TheraPlay does as well. Um, they can really build group cohesion and um, allow a group to have fun together through play. We teach pro-social skills for successful social interactions. Um, we build positive relationships and communities so you can invite parents to work with you as well. And we improve group functioning and individual learning through group TheraPlay as well. And as I mentioned before, you can have more targeted groups with particular goals in mind. Um, there are a number of um, TheraPlay videos on YouTube that you can go and find. Um, most of them are based in America, so they may, may be slightly different to what we might see in the UK. 
Um, and group TheraPlay follows the same sequence as dyadic TheraPlay does. So we have an entrance activity, a down-regulating check-in, a sequence of high and low arousal activities, um, something to do with feeding or drink at the end together, and then an exit activity as well. So they have starting and ending rituals. Okay. Um, so that's group TheraPlay in the classroom. And it can be used in residential settings, in schools. It's, um, there's quite a lot of group training in the UK in schools. There's a two-day group training you can do. Um, family education programmes, caregiver education programmes. We have a particular programme for um, adoptive parents and foster, foster parents. Before and after school programmes, summer camps. Um, there is a TheraPlay summer camp run down in Wales by Viv Norris and her organisation. And um, there's a camp happening in Newcastle in, in a Chopwell forest, which brings together um, mountain biking and TheraPlay. Um, so people coming uh, get the TheraPlay training for adopters and foster carers. Um, they get group and family TheraPlay and they also get mountain bike tuition based around the TheraPlay model. So I'm excited about that. Um, and of course, children and adults with a whole range of special educational needs. So really anywhere that building relationships through play and having fun would help. Okay. Um, so I would really strongly recommend that you check out the TheraPlay Institute's website. That's the first one you can see down here, theraplay.org, because they have a whole host of online um, training activities running through the summer and they look really fantastic. We also have our own UK website, which is the second one that you can see there. Um, and we've got a new, newly formed UK organisation, so you can look at training and supervision there. There's, um, there's training happening throughout the UK scheduled for um, the autumn. We're looking at different ways of delivering that safely, of course, in the current climate. Um, OK, and you've got my email address there as well if you want to get in touch about anything in particular. So I'm just going to stop sharing screen. And I'm going to have a look to see if there are any questions. OK. So is there a great time to engage in these and is five minutes enough? Oh yeah, that is a great question. Um, so I would say that if you can incorporate these activities into your daily schedule, that is an absolutely fantastic thing to do. And if you've got five minutes, use that five minutes. Do a little guided massage, look up weather report online, do a weather report massage um, at bedtime, um, do a little feeding activity at snack time, build them into your daily schedule wherever you can. Yeah, and yeah, you can work in five minutes, absolutely. How much training and input do you do with parents and carers in order so they can use TheraPlay activities in the home? That's a great question as well. Um, so we do lots of psychosocial educational stuff with parents and also lots of experiential work with parents. We would always do that at the start in particular, and we wouldn't start TheraPlay with the child involved until we felt that they were ready. So until they felt we felt they had a good understanding of TheraPlay, of how it works, of the importance of um, empathy and attunement and regulation. And then as we did TheraPlay, um, as we were going through that sequence of activities, we would have periodic self um, parental self-reflection um, sessions as well, where we can do more sort of educational work and particularly reflecting on what's happening in the sessions. Um, yeah, and I would and I recommend parenting with TheraPlay to all the parents I work with as well. We get some parents where we can do lots and lots of parental work where they really need that ahead of time and where they may need their own therapeutic work as well before they start TheraPlay. And we get other parents who are ready to dive right in and get started straight away. So it's really variable. Okay, um, so I can't see any other um, questions here. Um, so I just want to say thank you very much for um, joining me to talk about TheraPlay this morning. I really hope that you um, are interested in finding more about it, that you have a look at the books, that you check out the websites and, um, and see if you can um, attend any training because I'd love to see you there. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, have a lovely day and goodbye.